Okay, welcome to this uh, video tutorial on the Casey et al. study. So, um, if you're doing A-level psychology, then you want to uh, take notes on this. And as we go through, um, pause it, do any associated tasks in your handout, and uh, complete a summary. Very importantly, the second part of this is extremely important. Wherever you see the pause button, pause it, take some notes, go back over it. There are big words in this study, okay? It's neuropsychology, it's parts of the brain, there are big words, okay? But I'm going to explain them all, hopefully very clearly, and uh, if you go back over them and put your notes into an understandable terminology for you, do some cue cards, do a spider diagram, do another PowerPoint, whatever you want, but do it in your own words. Okay, so um, here we go. What was the title of the study, first of all? Behavioral and Neural Correlates of Delay of Gratification 40 Years Later. Okay, for those of you who have just curled up into a little ball, um, don't worry, we'll explain all of that, of what that means. Uh, but essentially it means behavioral and neural correlates uh, means are there correlations between our brain patterns and our behaviors when we're trying to delay gratification and that means trying to put off pleasure okay and it, the reason why it's 40 years later is Casey et al are following up on a group of participants who were tested as very young nippers and 40 years later they're testing them as adults okay key thing for this regions of the brain so it's paired with Sperry's study on the AS spec so um, bear that in mind really the point of this being on the spec is to give you that idea of what areas of the brain are responsible for for which behaviors okay so here we go theoretical background um, I will say pause as we go along and wherever you see this this uh, icon pause me and make some notes okay so uh, oh, I'll also highlight as we go along so uh, you want to try and do the same get used to using your highlighter tools it's very good for university and um, looking back at your notes and seeing which is the important bit so the background uh, let's call this guy Andrew now poor Andrew has uh, got a marshmallow in front of him Okay, and the reason why he's looking so distraught is because he has been told by an adult in the room, don't eat the marshmallow, okay? You, you're more than welcome to eat it, but if you don't eat it, and I come back and there's not a nibble out of it, I'm going to give you two marshmallows. So, don't touch it and you'll get double the marshmallows. The adult walks out the room, okay? And that's the response, is a lot of the kids uh, really struggle. They understand the dilemma, but they just can't stop themselves from becoming gratified. They can't help the temptation. They can't resist the temptation. And that's what this study is about. It's taking young kids like this who were tested in this delay of gratification experiment uh, when they were young and then testing them again with brain scanners uh, when they were 40 years old uh, using different stimuli so let's have a look at that in a bit of detail so the ability to res resist temptation that is known as appetitive stimulus okay so whether you have an appetite for uh, something if you have an appetite for a particular stimulus then you have it it is known as an appetitive stimulus um, so whether you can resist temptation for that in favor of long-term goals is an essential component of individual societal and economic success. So in other words, if you want to become successful and have individual success in terms of money, in terms of control over your life, in terms of the holidays you go on, in terms of the partners you choose, etc., etc., then delaying gratification and not just getting a job at McDonald's um, now perhaps you will reduce your hours at McDonald's so that you can spend more time studying to go and do a degree and then get a higher paid job if you're going to delay that gratification then uh, your long-term goals are more likely to be met societal goals where you want to be in society and economic success as well your own economic success but from a societal basis as well we want people in society as a society, it's it's in our best interest for people to put off gratification, okay? Because it means that they uh, develop their skills and become more. Uh, they can contribute more to society in in some circumstances. 
So alluring situations diminish our control. In other words, you think you've got lots of control and you're going to be good today. You're not going to have the cookie. Okay, but then you see the cookie, the nice warm cookie that's been cooking and you can smell the cookie and suddenly you have no control over yourself. Okay, so alluring situations diminish control. For alcoholics, uh, for drug addicts, for sex addicts, then that alluring situation can be different to a cookie, yeah? And they might start out the day saying they're not going to smoke or they're not going to drink and then their control is diminished. So what serves as an alluring situation that requires capacity control impulses changes as we age, okay? So obviously... For a child, it might be a cookie. For an adult, it might move on to, to more tempting or alluring situations. So, how do we delay gratification? Well, it depends on cognitive control. Okay, Can we tell ourselves? Okay, Can we control ourselves by our thought processes? I'm going to um, stop uh, myself from eating this marshmallow because I know I'm going to get to in a bit. Okay, and keep telling yourself that and you'll get the second marshmallow. So cognitive control. Individuals use different cognitive strategies. So different cognitive strategies to delay gratification. And this is a very important statement that the researchers were making here. There appears to be naturally existing differences or individual differences in the spontaneous use of these strategies. Now, that's a really important sentence, which I'm going to explain properly. So, okay, nature nurture, yeah, is our behavior down to nature? Is it down to nurture? This is a very strong argument that the research is making about nature, and or at least um, at least we've developed these individual differences very early on, because they're saying these young kids show individual differences. Andrew can't control himself and is very distressed by trying to control himself. James, on the other hand, who's the next participant in the room, can control himself absolutely fine, okay? And says to himself, you can see him saying, I'm not going to eat it because I will get a marshmallow in five minutes. I'll get two marshmallows in five minutes, okay? Now, what the researchers are saying, that they spontaneously use these strategies. They're not taught by the researchers. They're not, they don't seem to be taught it at such a young age by parents. There seems to be naturally existing differences in their ability to do it. So that's an important contribution that this study argues towards nature nurture. When you get to evaluation, you can decide whether that is nature or whether perhaps they have learned these strategies from parents or from others very early, very early on in life. So in the first few months, perhaps. Okay. So let's see. Right. Where does this cognitive control come from? Well, Jabai and Cases, 2008, said that the inferior frontal gyrus, which is this part of the frontal lobe, is key in our, in our ability to interpret facial expressions and give an appropriate emotional response to the expression. Okay, so if somebody smiles at you, the appropriate response is to smile back. Okay, and your ability to recognize that and then to do it seems to be in this area of the brain. Okay. By the way, this is a side view of the brain. The eyes would be here, facing forwards. Uh, so we're looking at the side of our brain, and this is the uh, right-hand side. Uh, actually, that's the left-hand side of the brain there. Correlation has been found between an avoidance of risky behavior and greater excitation, increased neural activity in the inferior frontal gyrus. Okay. So if you put somebody in a brain scanner and you say avoid the risky behavior okay don't take the um don't take the marshmallow or don't react to somebody smiling at you and flirting at you okay don't smile back if you ask someone to do that in a brain scanner you'll see greater activity greater excitation of that area of the brain so increased neural activity more neurons will be firing in the brain in the right inferior frontal gyrus okay so this that is actually a view of the left but the right inferior frontal gyrus as well that is uh, 
where it is. The right and the left brain are pretty much identical, but their functions are slightly different. So we're talking about the right inferior frontal gyrus. Now, for the exam, don't worry about the specifics of where these areas of the brain are, okay? The important thing is in the, in the words, the inferior frontal gyrus or the right inferior frontal gyrus, okay? That's where you see more activity. Um, the ventral striatum, on the other hand, is this central bit, okay? So it's part of the central, the in, inner cortex of the brain. And uh, so you've got the brain stem here. This is the cortex of the brain. Um, but the internal cortex here, you have the basal ganglia. This area is called the basal ganglia. And in there, you've got lots of things like the hippocampus and the um, uh, corpus callosum. You've got several things in there. But the ventral striatum seems to be the area that is, is important for facilitating our... Um, our rewards, our complex social interactions, it can excite in complex social interactions, excite our behavior. So it is in the region, in the basal ganglia neural circuit, mostly associated with rewards. So if, uh, for example, somebody is winding you up, if your sister's winding you up, that part of the brain might go, it would be rewarding to hit her, punch her in the arm. Okay. And a child who hits another child is reacting to a reward part of the brain. Okay, Go and take that reward. If it's a tempting thing of taking a cookie, this is the area of the brain in that brain scanner that would that'd fire up. And in some people, like Andrew, would be extremely strong. So his inferior frontal gyrus there, sorry, his, his um, ventral striatum, right in the middle of his brain will be really active in that picture as his face is all excited okay the reward part of his brain is going crazy take it take the take the marshmallow okay so there seems to be this this interaction this fight when you are um, faced with that decision we've got a fight between our control part of our brain in the inferior frontal gyrus and the reward part in our ventral striatum okay and um, Met Metcalf and Mitchell termed these hot and cold systems the inter the two interacting neurocognitive symptoms with self-control so they're saying that there is a decision made there is a tug of war between the hot system which will fairly show in there getting very excited about something whereas she's getting she's extremely cool she's thinking about the long term should i take the 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 marshmallow or should i not okay so the hot system is there the ventral striatum is active the desires and emotions um which is under stimulus control that means that the thing that is determining that uh, that response is the marshmallow. The actual stimulus is, is creating that activation. Whereas under cognitive control, under our thought processes, under our control, which she's doing there, thinking about it, is the frontal gyrus. Okay. So the question is, do we have individuals who uh, the hot system usually wins or... Do we have individuals where the cool system wins? So it looks like for Will Ferrell, for, for Elf, the hot system usually wins, whereas for her, the, the cool system usually wins. So what is a go-no-go -no -go task? Because the researchers use a go-no-go -no -go task. It's simply where you flash up uh, images at a participant and you say only press when you see a dangerous animal uh, flashed or only press when you see a smiling face flashed uh, or only uh, press when you don't see a smiley face so let me show you an example of that if you google go no go uh, task you can have a go at this and it says click on the plain green dot when it appears ignore the pattern dot so my go is the green and my no go is the patterned here it comes Ah, oh, I failed it. That was the alternate stimulus. So that I failed that because it was patterned. I passed that one. And it's measuring my reaction time and whether I get them right or wrong at the same time. Okay. And that's what the researchers are using in this. Okay. So join me for second part.